Hi there. Uh, for those people who are concerned about the uh, uh, rapid rate at which I am producing videos this week, uh, let me explain one thing. I, uh, I am working part-time now. I, I expect to be very busy over the next three weeks. Uh, I don't expect to have very much time at all for producing any videos. And I have been free this week, uh, therefore I have done all of my old camera videos, which of course added up quite a bit. And uh, now I'm uh, just putting in a couple of others before time runs out. So what's today's topic? The mythical best camera. Now, I say mythical because whenever anybody asks you what is the best camera, obviously, if they haven't put any disclaimer with that, if they hadn't narrowed that down at all, they, you can't answer that question. Okay? What is the best camera? For them, it might be this one. Okay? So, instead, let's take a look at some of the myths. First of all, is the myth that if you have a uh, top-of-the-line digital SLR camera, then you have everything you could possibly want. Well, first of all, for a beginner, if you went out and got yourself a Nikon D5 or a, a, a Canon 1DX Mark whatever, you're going to find, first of all, you now have a substantial chunk of camera. It is heavy. It was expensive. You're going to want to carry that around all the time? Probably not. If you had bought one of the enthusiast level cameras, you probably would have been a lot happier with it because it would have been lighter and a little more discreet. So, let's get that out of the way right away. Next, if it doesn't say Canon or Nikon on it, then it's no good. That, of course, is also nonsense. Canon and Nikon make excellent cameras, especially their professional equipment. But outside of that realm, you do have other manufacturers that make excellent cameras. So do not get trapped in this feeling that if you don't own one of those two brands, then of course you are not a serious photographer. Next, some genres of photography have a particular brand associated with them for good reason. Well, sort of. Street photography is forever linked to the Leica camera. Probably because of the fact that photojournalists from the 1930s on up to the late 1970s pretty much all used Leicas. Why? They were rugged, durable, they had good lenses, they were small and discreet, they were the perfect photojournalist camera. When the Nikon F came out and then other manufacturers started making quality single-lens reflex cameras, that market started to dwindle. By 1980, with the Nikon F3, uh, the rangefinder had more or less found its way into a rather small niche. So, why do we need them today for street photography? We don't. Are they good for street photography? Of course they are. You take a new digital Leica, excellent street photography camera. However, other manufacturers now build cameras that are just as discreet, uh, that can zone focus, just like the Leica can, that offer you many of the advantages of the Leica for a fraction of the price. Uh, a Leica with one lens will run you probably over $10,000. For $10,000, you can buy a complete outfit from most of the other manufacturers of a very high-end camera, I might add. So, is Leica a great camera? Yes. Would I want to own one? Yes. But is it the be-all and end-all and therefore the only choice for street photography? No. Well, moving on to other genres. Are you going to go out and buy a mirrorless system to go wildlife photography? Maybe later, but not yet. Wildlife photography is going to require long lenses and fast cameras with excellent focusing systems. Uh, sports, same thing. Right now, mirrorless cameras are getting close, but they still haven't reached a point where they can truly compete with the high-end models uh, of digital SLRs. 
And companies like Canon and Nikon also have uh, APS-C cameras, the, the D500 from Nikon, the 7D from Canon, that will allow you a little extra reach because of the crop factor and are extremely high performance. So what we have here is a case where uh, not only do you have many cameras available, but the choices are, are quite excellent. Other types of photography, if you're, if you're into portrait photography, let's face it, any camera that has a good lens, a good sharp portrait lens is all you need. Uh, if you are into just uh, vlogging, then of course you just need a camera that offers the video features that you need. Well, I'm not going to ramble on about this, because my whole premise is simple. There is no best camera. Get that out of your head right away. Research carefully the type of photography you want to do and what people are saying about different cameras for that type of photography. And if you're like me and you can manage to, to branch into two directions, I have my travel video system, which is my um, Olympus, and I have my Sirius system, which is my Pentax. Well, I hope this video uh, helps out a little. Uh, thumbs up, like it if you like it, share it if you think someone else might uh, have some interest in it, and of course subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. Bye for now.